Hello, my name is Anton de Berry, a famous brumpetologist from the 19th century. You may remember me from my starring role in The Night of the Living Dead. Or perhaps not. Anyway, it is my pleasure to introduce you to my colleague and dear friend, Professor Richard Bostock, who will tell you about the importance of recognition between plants and microorganisms. Thanks, Anton. Recognition does play an important role, not only in plant microbe interactions, but also in our day-to-day -day lives. For example, when you encounter another person, recognition determines how you react. If you perceive that person to be a threat or an annoyance, chances are you will not allow that interaction to proceed. Likewise, most potential parasites fail to gain access to most plants. Many spores that land on a plant will not even germinate and so will have no opportunity to establish an infection. Not all encounters are so passive. In some cases, parasitism fails only after concerted effort by the parasite to gain access to a potential host. In this case, an active response is required to prevent the interaction from proceeding. Similarly, recognition of a microorganism may allow a plant to effectively counter an infection attempt. In this case, the spore germinates and penetrates the leaf's cuticle. However, the plant responds by elaborating a thickened layer that prevents the parasite from gaining access to a living cell. Although there is value in excluding parasites, it also is important to recognize the potential for positive interactions. In this case, recognition may allow for an interaction that is beneficial to both parties. These relationships are referred to as mutualistic. A plant microbe interaction that belongs in this category involves legumes, members of the pea family such as the lupin shown here, and certain bacterial species. This interaction begins with recognition between a root hair and a bacterium. Here you can see the root hair, shown in green, is beginning to coil around bacteria, which appear to be red in color. This results in formation of a root nodule, shown here in the early stages of development with bacteria, appearing blue in color, growing within the root. Within fully formed root nodules, bacteria carry out a process known as nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation is important for soil fertility because it converts diatomic nitrogen gas, which is inert, into ammonia, a form that plants can use as a nutrient. Not all interactions have such a clear-cut outcome. For example, it is not uncommon for a parasite to gain entry, but then to remain relatively inactive. Often the host seems not to notice. Microbes that accomplish this without doing visible damage to their host are referred to as commensal. Here you can see hyphae of a commensal fungus growing within plant tissue that appears completely healthy. Sometimes a relationship that appears commensal can change if the host is compromised. When this happens, the parasite can obtain nutrients at the expense of its host. Microbes that engage in this type of opportunism are referred to as latent pathogens. For example, this peach has sustained an infection that is invisible to the unaided eye. When the fruit is wounded or has ripened sufficiently, the pathogen can become active and cause a disease known as brown rot. In general, when a plant fails to recognize a microbe as a pathogen, disease may result. Here we see a leaf infected by the stripe rust pathogen. Adjacent to it is a leaf from a plant that is resistant to stripe rust. Resistance is achieved by transferring one or more genes from a plant that is resistant to the disease to a variety that has desirable yield and quality characteristics. Resistance is often conferred by a gene that codes for a protein, known as a receptor, that recognizes and binds with the molecule produced by the pathogen. This triggers a metabolic response in the plant that prevents further growth of the microbe. However, a pathogen may overcome genetic resistance if a mutation alters its molecular structure so it is no longer recognized by the host receptor. Recognition is also important to plant pathologists and growers who associate the appearance of a diseased plant with possible causes of the disease. In addition to their diagnostic value, symptoms of disease may also be of interest simply for their aesthetic value. For example, why would anyone want a calendar such as this with a stupid bird on it if instead they could enjoy this beautiful disease of the month calendar? Order yours now and get this handsome 10x hand lens, a $15.99 value. Operators are standing by. Thank you for listening.